Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Neotopia by Amiibo and Arcane Wonders. This is a game that plays two to four players, takes about 35 to 40 minutes to play, and it's for ages 10 and up. And in the game Neotopia, you are playing on a board, utilizing these discs here to make combinations in order to score these cards here. When you score, you'll score the different areas associated to where you have played your discs in the appropriate formation, and you'll score along these little borders here. At the end of the game, which is after all of these factories have been completed, you're going to score points. You'll score for each of your different areas and triple in your smallest area. And whoever has the most points is the winner. You'll get bonus points and bonus actions for utilizing or keeping these tokens here that can let you do certain things once a turn. And you can also use your character card and token in order to keep track of the three actions you'll get on your turn. Will you score the most points in Neotopia? Find out in the game as I explain the setup, how to play, and of course my review. To begin the setup for the game, the first thing you do is take the main game board out and place it within reach of everybody on the table. Then you're going to go ahead and take one of each color and place them on the three factory spaces on the prongs of the game board. After that, depending on the number of players you're playing with, you will take these tiles factory tokens here and you'll place them down right in the middle. And then you're going to select one of each of the color discs and place them on top of these. Then. Each of these tokens is going to be randomly shuffled and placed on each of the circular spaces in each of the three different areas. There are four total. And then you're going to have a stack of four in each of the four or three areas outside here. Then you'll flip them over. So they start face down, then they get flipped face up. And now you'll know at least what the top one is for each of the different spaces. Each player is going to start with three cards in their hand, a character card, and a character token that will allow you to keep track of your actions. The first player will begin by placing down one of their specific colored discs on any one of the middle circle spaces on the game board, and each player in clockwise order will do the same, either placing it on a circular disc um, uh, next to or adjacent to a circular disc already placed, or in the middle disc space on the game board itself. It's okay if some of the different quadrants do not start with any discs. After that happens, the players will begin taking their turns of the game. Make sure you set aside any extra characters and their tokens, as well as make sure you set aside all the discs that people can use. And have a deck of the cards shuffled and deal out four in a line, which is what is going to allow players to get new objective cards. And set aside the victory point tracker here for the end of the game. The last thing you do is you place each player who's playing one of the, their little scoring point trackers and place it just before the one on each of the three different tracks and you're ready to play Neotopia. Oddly enough, setting up the game is more complex than how to play the game. This is actually a very smooth, simple game to play. On your turn, you get three actions. You can take those three actions in any combination as long as there's only three and there are two different actions you can take. Action one is you can take any of the cards either face up in the area here of the market or from the top of the deck and put it into your hand. That's it, that's action one. No limited number of cards you can have in your hand, but they provide no benefit for having multiples at the end of the game. Action two is you're going to be able to take uh, a disc from any of the three factory areas on the sides of the different uh, locations of the game board and you will place them adjacent to one of the discs that's already there, or if there are no discs, you can place it on the middle circular space to start the playing area. So uh, as an example of my turn, I took a card and I have two actions left. I can take this blue piece and place it either adjacent to this green piece or adjacent to this blue or purple piece. So I can go ahead and place it right there. Then I have one more action left. I can go ahead and take this red piece and either place it adjacent to one of these two blue or this purple piece or this red piece over here. The only thing I'm not allowed to do is if there's a factory I can only place in one of the two adjacent sectors, I can't place it on the opposite sector. If at any point one of the factories is completely empty of the discs, you are going to take these discs and you are going to place them out from the factory down on the main factory onto the smaller factories. You'll reveal the bottom of the tile that you had taken the discs off of and you will place those discs on top of the next factory. In this case, it's one at each of the discs. After you've taken your three turns or three actions on your turn, uh, you're going to pass. And the next player will get their chance to be able to take cards from here or to be able to take and place these discs here onto adjacent regions in order to score points. 
Let's talk about scoring points now. You get cards in your hand and each card is gonna have a reference of a piece of art and a combination of discs. If you meet the requirements for a combination of discs and you're also the person to place the last piece needed for that combination, you may score. You may only score one card for each of the different discs you place out. So even if a disc you place out can actually fulfill two cards, you can only choose one. And when you score something, you are going to then be able to place that card into one of the three discard piles in the region in which you're scoring, and you'll move your tracker. So for instance, if I wanted to score this one, which is two purples uh, and adjacent to two greens, I could go ahead and place a purple and place another purple, that'd be two actions, and then as my last action, I can take this green and place it like that. These can be mirrored or rotated as long as it meets the combination here and you'll check to make sure, and then you'll discard the card, thusly scoring it, and you'll score the bottom left-hand side of points. In this case, it's four. Let's say I am the green player. I will move my point tracker to number four. And that's how you score in the game. Now, that would have taken all three of my actions, so I would pass them, and the next player would get a chance to go. Also note, too, at the end of my turn, if I have taken any cards from this pool here, that is when this pool is going to refresh and new cards will come from the deck. It's very unlikely that the deck is going to run out by the end of the game, but if it does, shuffle it and start over again. Um, I don't think it actually even can work that way, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, regardless though, that's the basic idea of gameplay. There's a few other little rules to it, where if you place a disc on top of one of the smaller cardboard discs, you will take that disc and you will place it in your pool. These are worth three points at the end of the game, and they also could, if you'd like, provide you with a one-time benefit. Some of them will allow you to place a disc from the pool onto the game board, others will let you take an extra action, and others will let you take two cards from the market. You may only play one disc on each of your turns, and if you don't use your discs, you'll simply score them at the end of the game. The game will progress up until the point where the last tile has been drawn from the main factory area. In which case, every single time you need more of these from this area here, you'll simply place one of each color. Everybody's going to get one round of equal turns after this empties and after the last player takes their turn. So basically, this gets emptied, players finish the round, and then there's one more round. At which point, each player is then going to get a chance to score up their points. They'll score up their points in each of the three regions. So for instance, if green has 12 points on this track here, and green also has, let's just say that green had three uh, greens connected to each other, that would be an extra three points. So 12 plus three is 15 points, and you would mark that down. And you would do the same for each of the different areas. The area where you score the least scores you triple. So be aware of that, and that's gonna make you wanna play in different areas of the game. And then you'll get a bonus three points for each of these action tokens that you do not use. Remember that they do not count as an action for your turn, and you may only use one on each of your turns. Otherwise though, that's the main idea of the game. There's some little caveats where some of the cards are gonna be for specific players, and if you play them, you'll get more points, but it's gonna score your opponents more points at the end of the game, um, and they have a certain type of score mechanism on the, bottom, on the bottom left. But otherwise, that's the basic idea of how you play Neotopia. Grab cards, place discs, score your objectives. Will you win? Let's find out. I'll talk about my review now. So Neotopia is actually a fairly simple game. On your turn, you'll have your three cards, you'll take your three actions, whether it be grabbing these cards here or placing down the discs into adjacent regions, attempting for each disc that you place to score one of the cards in your hand that meets the requirements. And you have to literally just follow the requirements. This has two uh, purples connected to each other and then a red on each side. If you can meet that requirement, you put it in the zone in which you completed that arrangement and you score the points on the bottom left. There's another caveat too, where if you have a card of a specific piece of art in that specific area, you cannot score another card of that specific art in that area. So you're gonna always have to be scoring different types of cards in each of the areas. Once you've scored something else though, you can go ahead and return back to the card that you'd like to score. And also remember too, that you can only ever score one card um, for each of the discs you place. And then if a combination is already out on the field that you need to, um, that you need for one of these cards here, it's not gonna count. You have to be the person to place the last disc of the combination in your hand in order to score the card. This game is all about placing down your disc color in each of the regions, making sure that they connect to score your additional points at the end of the game, 
In addition to scoring these little specific objectives, pushing your track marker across, and attempting to kind of balance the scales in each of the different regions. If you had, for instance, a space with 12 plus 3 is 15, another space that's like 2 and maybe 1, which is 3 points, and then this one over here, which is let's just say you scored like 20 or 30 points, uh, but you had 0 here, that would give you 30, 15, and sadly only like 3 and then because this is the lowest one, you'd score triple, which is gonna go to nine. So making sure that they kind of balance themselves is gonna potentially score you more points overall throughout the game. This game is very simple. It's very straightforward. There is more cutthroatery, that's a word I made it myself, that happens at the beginning of the game, basically when you start placing down specific discs, combating your opponents because there's so limited number of spaces to kind of like interact with. Um, and so there's kind of like, there's slight feel bad moments that happen early on, but shortly after like two or three rounds, the entire board becomes available. Certain spaces work better for you compared to your opponents. There is interaction, but the interaction is based on placing your discs down and taking cards that maybe your opponents might want. This I would say is a, a, a light uh, game, which in, involves a good amount of interaction, but a very light amount of aggressive plays. It's a puzzle game. It's a game that's not only puzzly, but like also you can kind of control your movements, determine where you're going to be placing based on what your opponents place, and pre-plan most of your moves. Sometimes you might have a hitch in your plans based on somebody else placing something you'd rather them not place on the game board. But overall, you're always able to kind of control what you do. These little bonus tokens are wonderful. Using them once a turn is great, and saving them for victory points is also not so bad because you can get some points that actually can score you the winning a num number of points that you need. Um, being able to use these is great too. Drawing two cards for as a free action on your turn is much better than spending an action to draw one card. So if you're able to get these, especially as the game winds down, maybe you have bad actions left, you can just simply start going for heading towards these end spaces here to score those bonus tokens. With more players comes more interactions and the board starts filling up more, I suppose not necessarily more because you get the same amount of these guys here, uh, but there's more interactions that can be taken place here. Uh, the game's still roughly the exact same amount of time, maybe a little bit more for players because there is a few extra tiles that come in the game for the three and four player variants, but this game works great at two three and four, there's no problems. I, you can enjoy this game fully at a two player level, which you know, most of these games I say is made for three or four players, best at four. This one actually is fine at all player groups. I still obviously prefer to play with more players, but in this case here, I would be happy to play this at two players. The way the victory points work and how you can score not only from the grid here, which is also not only scoring your adjacent colors of your character, but also from your cards. And then this track here that keeps track of that is a wonderful, wonderful thing that kind of adds to the style of the game. The art is wonderful. I don't have a lot to say negative about, about this game. Um, it's very, very enjoyable, as long as you don't mind a little bit of feels bad moments at the very beginning, which can happen. Um, and as long as you don't mind kind of a lighter game. This is a pretty straightforward type of game. You'll know kind of what you want to do on your turn most of the time. And if you don't, being able to look at this stack here and determine, oh, here's a thing I can actually make on this turn here. And look, I have it here. I have a purple, I can draw this for my action. And then let's say there was a purple here. I could take this purple and I could place it here. And now I've got three purple connected to two green and I could score this card. But wait, it's the same artwork, so I can't. Um, and that's kind of how the game works. Now, of course, if this didn't ha wasn't here and you could place this down, that would score you five points, which is great. But knowing what is available to you and placing down these uh, cards and your tiles is great. The way in which uh, the tiles reform, so basically when you have uh, an empty uh, factory, you're gonna be taking them off of the top here and then you'll look at the bottom and check and there's new combinations. It works as a timer for the game. You can actually see the timer kind of decrease as the game progresses. And it's just an overall fun experience. This is a great game. I'm keeping this in my collection for quite some time. It's a game I think anybody can play and I in fact know two friends I'm gonna set this out to play with this weekend. That's so much I like Neotopia. If you like it, there's a link down below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Neotopia by Arcane Wonders and Mebo. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, there's a link down below like I said before. If you also like this channel, seen one or more of our videos here and think we've earned your subscription, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button as well. We 
We do live streams on Sundays uh, at 6.30 p.m. PST and Wednesdays, uh, whatnot, at 6.30 p.m. PST. So every Sunday is gonna be all three platforms, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to dropping down discs and scoring objectives with you in Neotopia next time.